Hey, it's Tim. Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and check it out. This is a 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 and AT4X and AEV Edition. Yeah, this is American Expedition Vehicles Edition, and this thing is pretty badass. So, in this video, I'll show you more about this truck. We'll talk about the interior, exterior, and then I didn't know what to do on this, as far as review, and you guys asked a lot of questions in the comments, like, what's the sound like in the cabin, and what's the ride feel, and how's it corner? And so we'll get to those as well, because there's a lot of talk about these new off-road trucks. They're pretty darn good, but if you haven't driven one for a while, well, you probably don't know that. So, let me explain it to you. <laughs> That's how the shop works. All right, so we have the AEV steel bumper. This is really cool. A lot of bumpers are now just kind of, it's like body like this. This is solid steel. You can hit stuff, you bash stuff around. Some really good hook spots for like, you can put a uh, different hooks in there, different ideas. We also have five boron steel skid plates. I have a list inside, we'll tell you more about the list. Okay, remember it's like rear differential, front skid plate, transfer, uh, fuel tank. Yeah, we'll get through all those details inside. It's, I haven't written down because yeah, that's what I have to do these days. Uh, Salta wheels, which are pretty cool looking. And with 33 inch tires, we have the rock rail on the side to keep stuff off. Um, they <laughs> does make a little bit of a challenge getting in and out, but you know, because I'm short. Because it's got a two inch lift, which makes it even harder for short guys like me. Uh, Multimatic DSSV dampers, which you can't see on that side. You can see on the other side. Where do they go? Interesting. Uh, I'll show them off the other side. We have this uh, steel bumper back here. Again, nice attachment points for different things. And the only thing you do lose, you do lose the foot going in to climb up. So that's kind of a pain. Uh, I do have the multi pro tailgate. This, again, if you haven't seen this one, it comes up like this, goes up like this. What's nice is you can, you can do some stuff back there, have a little storage here. This does, I actually tested it out a couple years ago. And if I recall correctly, you still drywall doesn't fit even with this up so you still got drywall hanging over the bed, bed a little bit it's a little bit of a bummer it's a little heavy or i'm a little tired today let's go with it's heavy all right so uh drop this down drop that down and then what's cool this one's got the baddest thing ever it's got kicker speakers back here which are awesome i was actually in newfoundland one time with gmc when they launched this sitting on the on the bay watching the ships cranking some, cr some country music a little beer holder I mean, what else do you need right there? That thing's party central. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, this comes out as well. It helps you get into the bed. Boom, boom. So that's a spray and bed liner. See the AT4X in the bed liner, which is kind of a, just a cool little addition there. Tells your buddies that, yeah, buddy, I got the cash. I bought the right one. You know what's up. All right. Multimatic DSV dampener. I see it over here. I think I can't see it because the way the... the um, the way the wheel mold lining is on the other side because they actually a lot of times gm will do this they'll put the shocks in different sides we'll put one this way one going that way to offset some of the ride quality issues you may have with bounce rebound and different uh, engineering words all right let me close this up let's hop inside check out what else new on this 2024 2023 2023 gmc sierra 84x it's part of my job 23s and i get 24s and i just did a 22 review the other day <laughs> it's crazy Okay, I needed two hands. Sorry about that. So inside we have the Obsidian Rush interior, which has got this really kind of cool like Morse code feel to it here. Double stitching here, really nice stitching here as well. Uh, Bose speakers there. AT4X, but I do have the AEV um, floor liners and I have the AEV boom on the badge. ATV, AT4X, lots of competition going on. <laughs> no, it's not. Just kind of, they add all these little features, different styling there as well. Power, like 12 way power, adjustable seats, plus massage, which is really cool. Auto shut down in four minutes, no thanks. Um, so we have the four wheel drive features here as well. We do have auto four wheel drive, which is a big fan favorite of most GM vehicles. Um, we have new interior here, which is slightly different than my Silverado interior. I just noticed the other day that I don't have the sunglass holder back here. The vents are a little bit different placement. So I kind of like my uh, Silverado a little bit better. Because of that small thing, yes, small things. Uh, the new shifter, which is actually really nice, opens up lots of cargo room in here as well. I have front lock locker, I have rear locker as well. And I have downhill assist control. The auto starts top off, everybody doesn't like that. Tailgate drops, I do have lane departure as well there too. But the uh, five skid plates. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, it's in this one. So five skid plates, hot stamp, boron steel, uh, front approach, steering gear, transfer case, fuel tank and rear differential, AEV stamp rear bumper, 12 spoke high gloss black aluminum wheel with AEV center cap. Uh, $6,895 is how much this is. AEV center cap, I don't think I have that. Do I? I do, it's right there. That's pretty cool. I didn't even notice that. There's a little feature there. I didn't even notice that. Hmm. 
Who knew? All right, uh, let's see. Rocker protection, which is right there. AV, weather floor liners, banded head to gun. All that stuff is $7,000 more for that. Volcanic red tin coat, $645, and total price, $91,085. That's what they're getting these days for that truck. Uh, 15 combined, 14 city, 17 highway, which actually, I drove to uh, Cheyenne yesterday, and I have keys. Come on, give me the, give me the stuff here. My keys are right there. Guess I gotta hop in. All right. This is a uh, short guy hopping in. All right. Thank goodness for the grab handle. <laughs> okay, there it goes. 15.3 is my mile per gallon. I did 208 miles, drove about 60 miles an hour. So yeah. <laughs> this comes in a three liter diesel. I think it's really good fuel economy. Get that one. Okay, so we have the engine start stop button here as well. Kind of cool layout there. All your controls there. And then your rear seats are the same as you've seen in the different GM vehicles and a small sunroof because they don't do panoramic sunroofs. Um, I think that covers everything. Full grain leather seats, the premium micro suede headliner. Ooh, micro suede. All right. Enough of that. Let's uh, <laughs> let me move my camera around. Let's go for a drive. Okay, so let's start this off with making this corner. So this is a common question I'm getting on the channel. Um, you remember historically off-road trucks used to be really squirrely, a lot of body roll. You used to slide like over here. You had to steer it back and control it because you had these big tires on and the lift and the rubber and physics and. I take one finger now and I can make corners with this thing and I feel pretty confident with it. So uh, really a lot's improved with tire technology, a lot's improved with the drivetrain suspension. And so, yeah, I'm gonna make a corner over here. I wish I could show you, but this is a national park. They don't let me do much drone footage over here. But as I, I'm, in one, I'm doing one finger. As I turn, it's just turning. I mean, I'm holding the finger down and that's a corner. So there really isn't that much anymore. It used to be, like I said, the older trucks, 1990s, 2000s, older off-road trucks used to have a lot of body roll. This thing is really refined. I mean, you could. this is where you get that luxury interior in this and you get the off-road capability, which is kind of a hard combo to pull off. And I think GM's done an exceptional job on this and the ZR2 and the AT4 on, and the Trail Boss on doing the off-roading plus on-road driving manners pretty well. Now, you're thinking about sound, and I had the same thought. So I actually bought this a couple years ago. It's an audio sound. It's this digital sound level meter, officially. Um, and so let's talk about sound because t again, used to you hear, used to hear tire whine of the tires. Used to hear a lot of things. And so I'm going to turn this on. Okay, so right now we're about 70 decibels, 67, 68, 70 decibels in that range. Um, actually, let me look at one more time. I just want to do it because, oh, 69. And that's going uphill. So I have 69 to 70. So how do I feel about that? Is it better or worse? Well, we're going to find out. I'm going to go get my high country in a little bit, and I'll put that in this video, and we'll take the high country that's got the highway tires, not these off-road tires, and I'll grab my sound meter, and we'll do a quick comparison because, no, that's actually useful. <laughs> okay, now I'm in the Chevy Silverado long-term review vehicle I bought for this channel, and it's got the three liter Duramax diesel and highway tires. Let's see what this looks like. So I have this bouncing around like 68, to like 69, 70 up, up near the window. So it's like 68 down here. So we're about a decibel difference, I would say, between this and the AT4X AV. Uh, I'll let my sound people talk about decibels and whether one decibel is a big issue or not. For me, I don't know, it's, it's not the end of the world. And yeah, I don't hear any tire whine here at all because I have the AT tire. So a little more tire whine, a little bit louder in the AT4X AV edition, but is it bad? No, it's not something I'd be really concerned about. And this corner is just as well as the AT4X does. So there we go, there's a the corner. So, and then this is pedal down with a 6.2 liter. Pretty well set up with the dampers. They, I don't like raise up in the air. I don't lower down. Uh, used time, a lot of times the old suburban stuff would just be like, whoa, you're driving. Um, I did that corner, so I went 
Uh, left lane, across two lanes, and I just barely made it. I mean, it's a big truck. Turning radius is not like a mini Cooper, and so yeah, you gotta take that consideration a little bit. But um, I, I'll do a little off-road here in a minute, but here we go, I'm driving, no hands, down the road, on center feels pretty good. I gotta correct a little bit, um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty smooth riding truck. Now, I, I can hear the tires now a little bit, but I really gotta, you know, really gotta listen for them. And if I had the radio on, I want to hear a darn thing in here. All right, let's have a little bit of fun in this video. Let's hit the dirt roads. <laughs> Why not? With an off-road truck. So there I'm on brakes. I'm turning. Again, not a lot of body roll. And then, boom. <laughs> I'm on the dirt. I'm on the dirt. And I get I get a little squirrely because I wanted to. <laughs> uh, but even when I get a little squirrely with it, uh, it still snaps back really fast. I feel really under control as far as off-road. And um, I wonder if I can jump this a little bit. Again, I wish I had my drone out today, but uh, drones don't go at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, I can't tell you how much fun it is to drive these trucks on pro, but here I'm going over a bunch of washboards. And this is my other point in the video was, even over the washboards, I feel lots of composed driving. I'm not like, boom, 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 like I still don't have the washboards. Oh, I gotta wash over the potholes. Oh no, potholes, washboards, whatever. It's, you just crank it, you go. That's one of the biggest benefits of off-road trucks that people don't always talk about. They're always like, I'm going to go to Moab, I'm going to climb rocks, I'm going to do this. Well, you know, this type of truck to me is great for in the countryside, for ranchers, for farmers. You can climb over ditches, you can go through the fields, you can go over washboards, and you don't have to worry about slowing down to handle all that road vibration because the suspension is set up so well, you just <laughs> go. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on this 2023 GMC Sierra 1500. AT4X AEV, the best of all worlds from GMC. Might have cut a little air there. <laughs> uh, the best of both worlds of everything from GMC. And uh, yes, is it $91,000? Yes, it is. Is it expensive? Yes, it is. Do you get what you pay for? Uh, your choice. I'm not going to make an argument about that because I know that I'm never going to win. But, you know, for me, it's like, man, if this truck does everything, Except for good fuel economy, which means I would go with the Duramax diesel. Because this, in the Duramax diesel, with all the, the steel bumpers, all the attachment points, I mean, my goodness, what a cool rig. I just want to know what the payload is going to be with that Duramax. Because right now, the payload in this truck is 1,000 pounds. So it'll tow a lot. I'll put the number on the screen. Oh, it's like 12,000 pounds. Wow. <laughs> I'll look at that number again. But it'll tow quite a bit, but you can't haul a lot, which is always kind of a downside. Which is why GMC is coming up with the three-quarter three tons. You can... Oh, more stuff. Oh, this is my old hunting spot. We'll flip around here. Guy won't mind. And again, big truck. Takes a minute to go. So if you're looking for payload, looking for towing and hauling, overlanding a lot, you probably go with a three-quarter ton version of this. But if you're looking for a half ton that's a little bit easier to use, and you want to just still have some fun with it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is not a bad option. For more, check videos over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you down the road.